Ever wondered whether fitness is truly a means for good health? Or is it just another way to look good and impress others? Do you work out to live longer? Or do you work out to look great naked? Welcome ladies and gents to another episode of the show that's going to get you closer to the answer. Welcome to the Men's Health and Women's Health Show. On the show today, how to run a marathon in six weeks, how to stay fit in office and increase productivity, and healthy South Indian food made healthier. Did you know the biggest cause of that paunch is not your laziness, it's your job. Slouching over a computer screen all day does no good. And if you don't listen to the advice in the next story, all the money you make on that job isn't going to be worth much. Come on guys, let's do some desk sizes. For most of us, a regular day at office is all about reaching in time and sitting in front of our terminal for long hours. Work, work and more work. Well, if you think that's your story, then wake up, we say. Time to rethink. Sitting all day increases our risk for obesity and puts us at risk for back pain, poor posture, leg cramps, tense muscles and sheer boredom. So this has to change, and that change is desk size. Alina Rohail, a personal trainer at Fitness First, is going to help you not only get out of this mundane routine, but also sculpt a toned figure while you're at work. So the best thing and the first thing that you can do for your mobility while you're sitting in an office is to get up, right? So what you want to do is reduce the stiffness in your lower back and the first thing to do this is rotate backwards with your entire spine. This relieves uh, stiffness from the lower back. To keep a healthy tone in your upper body muscles, chest, shoulders, triceps, you might want to do a desk push-up. It's an easier version of the normal floor push-up and it looks like this. You might keep your hands both wider than your shoulder on the desk, get your body weight on your toes, chest lifted, tummy tucked in and drop your chest in between your hands. Great, push yourself off without dropping your hips. 12 to 15 reps of this should be enough. Okay, another part of your body which can get really flabby because of no use during, the, during your office time is your, the back of your arm, which is your triceps. In order to strengthen that, what we can do at a desk is keep your hands slightly wider than your hips, step forward. While bending your knees, uh, lower your, your hips next to the bench and lift yourself up. This way, maintain the elbows parallel to each other. This way, you're working on your triceps. About 10 reps of this will do. One of the bigger muscle groups in your body which gets lengthened throughout sitting in your, in your chair is your quadriceps, your front thigh. So to strengthen that, you can lift one foot up, hold it for a second until you sli sli start feeling a burn in your quad and slowly release it. You can do the same with the other one. In a control, release it in a controlled manner. Lift and slowly in. You can do the same with both legs at the same time, but it's not very easy to balance. So this is for strengthening your front thigh. In addition to all your workouts, what I'll want you to remember is small, simple tips which are going to help you in improving your lifestyle at your workplace. Number one is going to be take the stairs whenever you have to go one or two floors away. That is going to help pumping up, uh, in pumping up your blood and it's going to improve your circulatory system. So tip number two is to keep a healthy snack with you whenever you are going to work long office hours. That will help you from hunger banks so you will eat less sugary and fatty foods. Tip number three, keep a happy reminder on your desk about maintaining correct posture. So involuntarily while watching in the laptop, you will hunch or you'll keep your neck forward. What you want is to see something nice that reminds you to straighten up. So put all of these ideas into effect right now and you should be happier, 
healthier and sitting comfortable into your chair very soon. Next up is a weight loss story that will inspire, guide, motivate. In fact, it does so much work, you wonder why it can't just lose the weight for you. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Friends, hello, my name is Lalit Bish and I'm an actor by the age of 28. When I started off my journey from fat to fit, I started off with a weight of 109 kgs. For me, it was absolutely bizarre, pathetic. However, now I am around 87 kgs. I think it's been a fabulous journey. So what is it that did the trick for Lale? What actually worked the most for me was the diet. You know, earlier when I was you know, really overweight, my diet was a disaster. I used to eat whatever came in my way. A lot of junk food, a lot of pizzas, burgers, soft drinks. But one fine day, Lalit decided to give up all of that. And now, on a normal day, Lalit's breakfast includes... Protein with complex carbohydrates and a couple of other multivitamins. I take usually muesli blended in milk with some protein. And right after that, I take some multivitamins and few glucosamine. For lunch, he prefers... Grilled fish, most of the times I am dependent on basa fish, which stays high in protein. You got all the, you know, omega-3, omega-6, all the fatty acids out there. And dinner is usually? Some nice salad, some green salad could do. You can add some tuna fish, you can add some grilled fish. But diet is just one component. It has taken him a lot more from being this to this. When you go into the gym, the most important factor is going to be a warm-up. Now, I would see 50 to 70% of people, they ignore this. Because not everything works for everyone. So, if it suits you, you can go for cycling for five minutes, you can walk on treadmill, uh, you can do some cross trainer. This function training not only works to improve your stamina, but it also helps to strengthen your body, the entire body. Hence, you become stronger and stronger. Let's go inside and hit some more iron, okay? Let's see, let me take it there. Come on. So first of all, I'm gonna hit the, one of my favorite workout, which is going to be the squats. Adding up the 5 to 10 minutes of cardio is definitely going to boost up and some good results to your workout. Day is over, workout is done and so the diet. I'm sure my story inspired you. So now, don't wait, hit the gym as soon as you can. Be fit, then fitter and the fittest. Goodbye for now. If you're one of those who saw the runners at the Delhi Half Marathon last month, and wanted to do the run yourself, here's some good news. Reebok's running squad has put together a six-week program that can have you ready in no time. The only catch, you need to start today. Running, I feel, is actually meditation and movement. You're not competing against the next guy for a better job. You're not showing off for anyone. You are running for yourself. This is a season of marathons, and a large number of people across all age groups are now picking up interest in the sport. While some are experienced runners, several of the participants are first-timers and more often than not are unable to research on the right gear and right methods of preparation and training before a marathon. 
but fret you not because Reebok with its running squad has a plan that will teach you how to prepare for a marathon in six weeks. The plan is a very very well thought out plan. It starts at least for the 21 where we start for beginners. It starts with a very easy walk jog combination. Uh, takes you in six weeks right up to race day. At the end of uh, the fifth week you start uh, rewinding your uh, workout. Through the six weeks it graduates you, it takes you to the higher intensity works workout, gives you the day where you have your rest, gives you the very very nice day where you have uh, active rest. Active rest means you're doing a cardio session which is not really running. So you could be swimming, you could be cycling, you could be doing other, activ other cardio, cardio activities which are not really running. Brings you up to a high intensity day. The next couple of days are maybe just a 7k easy pace jog, not a tempo run. Avoids injuries at various levels by giving you the relaxation. Uh, what we are looking at is that you are not eating anything new for the last one week, just before the run. You are not wearing anything new. So almost two weeks in advance or almost actually three weeks in advance, we advise our runners to wear, you know, just wash and wear the same uppers, the same lowers, the same socks. Shoes are not changing last minute at all. We don't want anyone getting blistered last minute. So that is the first. That's, the first is the apparel. Then we look at carbo loading happening. That's your fuel source for your body. What time, at what time, at how many kilometers does your body require that you should replenish? how much hydration is happening. You know, all of these are very tiny things. Maybe just that much of water going in at regular intervals can get you a brilliant race time and then you're happy at the end of it. We have to remember that years and years and years back, maybe hundreds of years back, when the human beings lived in jungles and in caves, it was either eat or be eaten. So, the human body is designed to run. If you can't run, you won't get food. The human body is designed to run. We teach you how to run safe. Let's now hear from some of the people who've been training with the Reebok running squad in Delhi. I started running at the age of 55. It's uh, really, uh, you know, you feel very, feel very good. Physical fitness has improved a lot. And uh, the breakdown, I mean, like a uh, breakdown in, in vehicles, similarly breakdown in our, our body is uh, de decreased a lot. Uh, since four years, I have not taken a single leave on medical ground. After joining the RRS, uh, River Running Squad, the endurance in my body has increased a lot. And I've been running for the last five years. Though I'm a fitness trainer, but running was never my cup of tea. I, I could not run, I could not jog. To learn learning, I joined Shiva Ma'am, and it's a great, Great experience, I tell you. When we run together, we run stronger and we run better and we make each other run More faster. Excitement. Yeah. The crowd takes you along, even when yes. you think you can't do it, you can because the whole crowd energy is with you. The message I'd like to give across is come for yourself, get out of your office. Get out of a shut environment, get out of your AC. Come out, look and see what the park is all about. We live in a beautiful city. We are in a beautiful place. Connect with your roots. Our connection is with our roots, it is with our universe. Connect with that, your body is going to demand it, your soul is going to demand it, and you're going to just zoom. Now, if I were to tell you that rice contains some of the healthiest carbs around, Many of you would question me, but some of you would also worship me. Rice, when cooked right, starch-free, can be as fat-free as Paris Hilton. Our restaurant spy goes over to a South Indian joint and tells us more. When I think of South Indian food, I think of a lot of rice. But did you know it can be healthy too? I'm at Dakshin at the Sheraton in New Delhi and our nutrition expert Lavneet Batra will be here any minute. Let's see how she indulges in all that rice guilt-free. Can I have uh, appam and stew, uh, malabar paratha?
South Indian food is very popular for different chutneys it comes with. I'm going to try first the coconut chutney. Even though coconut chutney comes with a lot of calories, it does help in getting rid of stubborn belly fat and can increase your BMR. So as long as you don't overdo the quantity, you'll enjoy the benefits of it. And we have the tomato garlic chutney. Garlic is known for cholesterol lowering effects, but this chutney comes with very low salt. Because the South Indian food is known for the uses of different spices. So you can enjoy the health benefits with low sodium tomato chutney. I've ordered Mean Moili, which is a speciality of Kerala. This is a fish preparation which is made in coconut milk. It's a fresh water fish which is rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Coconut milk, it's a great detoxifier and cleanses your liver. It also makes your bones very strong as it's rich in phosphorus. And it is a good source of selenium which has anti-aging effects. So if you want good skin and hair, you can go for this dish. And I have Kori Melagu Curry, which is a chicken dish. Uh, it's a speciality of Tamil Nadu. It is made with chicken, so very high in protein. And it is made in tomato and garlic base with black pepper. Black pepper can help you fight infections, which makes it a very good winter dish. vegetable stew with appam and paratha. Appam is made with fermented parboiled rice which is a very good source of B vitamins. These days many of us are deficient so I would definitely go for appam. It is very low in calories and it's totally steamed so no oil, low in calorie and gives you the benefits of B vitamins. It's a very common myth that white rice is unhealthy. But the white rice from South India, the parboiled rice, has a very low glycemic load. So it does not spike the blood sugar levels just like any other white rice. So you can enjoy this guilt free. paratha is made of maida which is refined flour. The glycemic index and load of the paratha would be much higher as compared to the appam. Also there is use of fat oils in making the paratha so I would say if you want to have paratha just have half of it in place of one appam. Now I have tamarind rice and curd rice. The good thing about South Indian meal is that it provides a variety of nutrients. In my tamarind rice, with rice I have mustard seeds and peanuts which gives the essential fatty acids and little bit of protein added to the rice which again helps in lowering the glycemic load. Also tamarind has carbohydrate blocking effect so it helps in keeping post meal sugars in control. The curd rice also makes a very good carb and protein combination for a meal. It also has fenugreek seeds added in it, which helps in lowering cholesterol and stabilizing blood sugars. Curd is a natural probiotic which helps in digestion. It is also a natural source of whey protein. So, this makes curd rice a very good recovery meal after a good workout. That was some South Indian overload. 
Now I exactly know how to indulge in all that rice and still not worry about the weighing scale. I hope you do too. After all that food, it's only right we bring the episode to an end. Go on, pack in a weekend workout, release some endorphins and feel good. Because remember, we won't be happy with your fit, not until you're at your fittest. <laughs>